Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Being one of the world's busiest shipping lanes and a key trade route between Europe and Asia, the Suez Canal is an artificial sea-level waterway in Egypt. connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea through the Isthmus of Suez. The first recorded attempt to build a canal was in the 13th century BC by the Egyptian pharaoh Ramses II. However, it wasn't until the 19th century that French engineer Ferdinand de Lesseps was granted a concession by the Egyptian government in 1854. With the canal opening in 1869, after 10 years of construction. Transporting a massive vessel like an aircraft carrier through the Suez Canal requires extensive coordination between the ship's crew, the canal authorities, and possibly other stakeholders. Time for two, now recommends. Such as tugboat operators and local pilots. The ship's passage through the canal is subjected to approval from the Suez Canal Authority. which assesses the vessel's size, draft, and other factors to ensure a safe and efficient transit. Tugboats would likely assist the aircraft carrier in navigating the narrow confines of the canal. These powerful boats help guide and maneuver the vessel, especially in areas with tight turns or limited space. The canal has a minimum depth of 65 feet and a maximum width of 672 feet. allowing for the passage of the largest ships, including commercial cargo ships. For this, a pilot will guide the ship through the canal, following a carefully charted route. On March 23, 2021, the Ever Given, a container ship with a capacity of 20,388 20-foot equivalent units, ran aground in the southern part of the Suez Canal. Blocking the crucial waterway, the vessel, one of the largest container ships globally, became lodged sideways across the canal preventing the passage of other ships. The Suez Canal Authority and local authorities immediately began efforts to assess the situation and formulate a plan for the vessel's removal. Once the ship's load had been lightened, the salvage crew proceeded with one of the primary objectives, which was to clear sediment from around the ship's bow and stern. The accumulation of sediment contributed to the vessel's grounding, and removing it was essential for refloating. Dredgers worked to create a deeper channel in the canal by removing sediment from the canal bed.
In addition to dredging, salvage crews also used tugboats to push and pull the ship. International salvage teams, including experts from the Netherlands and Japan, were involved in the operation. These teams brought specialized equipment and expertise to assist in the challenging task of freeing this grounded vessel. After six days of work, salvage crews were finally able to free the Ever Given on March 29, 2021. Marine pilots are highly skilled and experienced maritime professionals who guide ships safely through complex and congested waterways. They play a vital role in preventing accidents and groundings. They assess the risks, develop a safe navigation plan, communicate with other maritime professionals, and provide guidance to the ship's captain and crew. The Panama Canal is a critical waterway that connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Allowing ships to bypass the lengthy and treacherous trip around the southern tip of South America. The Miraflores locks consists of two chambers known as the Miraflores Upper Chamber and the Miraflores Lower Chamber. And they are essential for elevating or lowering ships to match the water levels of Gatton Lake, the artificial lake in the middle of the canal. Such locks are a marvel of engineering and a testament to human ingenuity. They have played a vital role in global trade since the canal opened in 1914. The locks allow ships to pass between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans without having to go around Cape Horn, which saves a significant amount of time and money. Vessels entering the canal from the Pacific Ocean pass through these locks, which lower them to the level of the Pacific. After passing through the Mira Flores locks, ships move on to the single chamber Pedro Miguel lock, which lowers them even further. Ships exiting the canal to the Atlantic Ocean go through the Gatton Locks. Which consists of three chambers, the Gatton Upper, Gatton Middle, and Gatton Lower Chambers. These locks raise vessels to the level of Gatton Lake. Transiting a vessel through the Panama Canal and these gates requires registration. This is done with the Panama Canal Authority. Scheduling is crucial, and ships are assigned specific time slots for their transit. Remote-controlled ship models are a valuable tool for simulating and training for canal transits.
They can be used to create realistic scenarios and to train pilots and other maritime professionals to practice and refine their skills in a controlled environment before undertaking the transit with a full-sized vessel. RC ship models are typically trained in a dedicated training area. This area is typically a large pool or pond designed to replicate the conditions of a natural canal. The training area may include features such as narrow passages, shallow waters, and currents. One example of a canal transit training area is the Panama Canal Scale Model Maneuvering Training Facility. This facility is located adjacent to the Panama Canal and includes a 1 to 25 scale model of the canal. The facility is used to train pilots and tug captains on the skills and procedures needed to navigate the Panama Canal safely. RC ship models used for canal transit training come in various sizes and configurations. Replicating different types of vessels that regularly traverse the canal. This can include container ships, bulk carriers, oil tankers, and other vessel types. The training instructor develops a scenario that replicates the conditions of an actual canal transit. The scenario may include factors such as weather conditions, traffic conditions, and hazards. The RC ship model is prepared for the training scenario. This may involve loading the model with cargo, adjusting the trim, and programming the autopilot. Maneuvering through locks, narrow channels, and areas with restricted visibility poses specific challenges. RC ship models allow for the simulation of these scenarios. helping trainees understand the nuances of navigating such areas safely. The training process also involves feedback and evaluation from instructors who monitor the trainee's performance. This feedback loop helps individuals identify areas for improvement and refine their skills. Tugboats with their powerful maneuvering capabilities are indispensable in assisting large vessels through narrow and challenging sections. Ensuring safe and precise navigation. Additionally, the use of simulations often integrated with remote controlled ship models provides an invaluable training platform for maritime professionals. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.